guys, what's up? Welcome back to the Daily Fix and Now Showing. My name is JC, and if you're new to the show, this is where I go. I see a movie that's coming out hot and fresh, right off the presses. I go watch it, come back here, let you beautiful people know what I think about it, so that you know you have a heads up going into the weekend, and going in if you want to go see it or not. And boom, so that's what we're doing. This week, I went and saw the new movie Need for Speed, starring Aaron Paul. A little quick fire review for you is that this movie was surprisingly good. I was very pleasantly surprised by it. In this movie, Aaron Paul plays Toby Marshall, who is just your run-of-the-mill, blue-collar, hard-working guy that loves cars and loves racing. And he gets caught up with some bad dudes, and he gets set up for a crime that he didn't commit, goes to jail for two years, comes back, and wants revenge and he seeks it out the only way that he knows how racing aaron paul was great in this movie and i haven't seen a whole lot of stuff that he's been in i know i haven't seen i need to i need to watch breaking bad and i need to give another shot because i started watching it and it just kind of slow and i gave up on it but i want to go back to it i'm gonna get caught up i'm gonna watch it so give me a break that being said aaron paul was really good in this movie uh, the character, this character is very much like a, a quiet, young, brooding kind of guy. Like, he doesn't say a lot in the film, which I think is really great. And we're starting to see some more films kind of do that, where they don't say everything. They, they show stuff, which is how it's kind of supposed to be. But he, he does a really good job playing this main character, Toby Marshall, just really kind of being genuine. The scenes with that, like, that you see in the trailer where he's just like screaming and he feels like you can you can feel his pain and they get sad at times and he does a really good job of portraying that emotion, portraying that that um, that hurt and loss that he suffers through uh, throughout this movie and you can see that he's still dealing with it. It's not just something like, oh, I'm gonna go seek revenge now. Oh, I'm angry the whole time. It was really good. He had a very good um, presence on the screen. Even when other people were on the screen and with him, his presence wasn't so like commandeering where you're like, oh, what is he going to do? Like He was able to uh, position himself and portray when maybe there was a scene where he wasn't the main guy in that particular shot or in that particular scene, and he was able to kind of be like, oh, okay, I'm going to let you have your time. But it was it was really well done, really well flowing. Um, but Aaron Paul did a great job. And spoiler alert, Imogen Poots is in this movie, and she is adorable. Oh, my goodness. She, she did a really good job in this film, even just being, like, the main actress, but kind of, like, supporting and being that uh, quiet drive for Aaron Paul and for the rest of the cast and... But when she does talk, she speak. Her character speaks with power, speaks with emphasis and stuff, and um, really kind of throws the kicks the guys in their butts a little bit every once in a while. Uh, but she does a great job too, portraying emotion and in taking care of what needs to be taken care of. Imogen Poots, I, I applaud you in your performance in this film. Uh, one thing, one thing I want to say about this movie is because yeah, there is a love. Um, dynamic between it there is a, a love story between the two uh characters the the love story of it all takes a back seat it's not driving the story it's not pushing the story forward um it takes a back seat to it which is good they didn't have to like throw it in your face like oh these guys are in love he really likes her oh no it's really well done in that and that and i all that credit goes to the story the, to the script writer, the screenwriter, uh, whoever wrote this script uh, did a phenomenal job. Hats off to the director, Scott Waugh. He did a phenomenal job, I believe, with this film. It's not going to win any awards outside of maybe like an MTV Movie Award or something. It's, probably, it's not going to win an Oscar or anything. The way he took that awesome script and put it on the screen and portrayed it was very well done. It wasn't done cheesily. There wasn't... Um, super cheesy moments there were parts that like, kind of kept you on your feet you're like oh oh i almost died um not like a scary thing but just like oh keep, keeps you in it keeps you in the movie but there it was it was super good i really enjoyed it this everything about it one cool thing that i didn't know until afterwards until i was watching some interviews with him is that there's no cg in the movie all the car scenes all the drive racing scenes 
Um, everything that you see in the film, they actually did. They actually wrecked cars. They did all that stuff. And it wasn't just, oh, we'll just CG and stuff. Um, but it was like, wow, holy cow, that's really good. And I'm glad that they did that. I saw an interview, Scott Wall said that he really wanted to kind of throw it back to the early car movies of like the 60s and 70s, like Bullet, Smokey and the Bandit, and things like that, like Steve McQueen type movies. And I felt like he did a really good job with that. Uh, also, Michael Keaton uh, was great. You know, it's Michael Keaton, so you're not going to really get a, uh, a horrible performance. But I felt like he did a really good job for a smaller role. And he's kind of top billed because he's Michael Keaton, which is, all, oh, I'm okay with that because he deserves it. But he had a smaller role, but, role, but he, he did really well. And I really enjoyed him in it. He, he kind of narrated some aspects. And I was like, wow, I could listen to Michael Keaton talk for a while. If I can't get Morgan Freeman to narrate my life, Michael Keaton might be up there because he's, he's got a voice that's really easy to listen to and he knows how to work it. He knows how to use his vocal dynamics and ups and downs and, uh, and things like that. And, uh, but, so he was really good. But the action was great. Uh, everything about the film I really enjoyed. I, I, I thought it was really well done, really well put together. Visually it was well done. You know, I mean, I all one thing I like to say too is like the that the fact that there were cops and like the final racing there's cops was like you in other racing movies you it's like where are the cops? Why aren't they doing something? Oh they have the roads blocked. Oh okay. Oh they have scanning. Like no cops are gonna be there. And they did a really good job portraying that. They didn't give it like, oh wait, there's a cop supercar who's coming to get him. You know, it like the cops were pretty realistic. I felt like doing like realistic things to try and get ahead of them and stop them and things like that. And so that that was really cool. I really appreciated that aspect. One of the big worries about this movie going into it, it was an adaptation for a video game. Uh, but what's the the trick here? is that the video game doesn't really have a storyline. You know, now granted I haven't played the game uh, for a while, but there there's not a huge like doing something where you would have like actual characters that people are going to fall in love with. There's no like judgment in that because it's a racing game and you're just basically you're taking the idea of the game, taking the name from of the game and writing something completely original. You not have to worry about um, people worrying if the the chronological of the movie and the game don't line up. It's a racing game. So they, they definitely had that advantage in the game to movie genre. My final grade for the film Need for Speed is actually an A. And here's why. Because yes, it's, it's just a racing movie, but it had a bit of everything. It had, you know, you had laughter, you had love, you had drama. You had sadness, you had anger, you had joy. It had everything in there, and it was wrapped up really nicely done, really neatly, and I'm I'm excited for it. And here's a big thing, too. I will say I probably liked it better than I liked the Fast and the Furious movies. Not that they're not good, but but compare, like, the start, like, the first Fast and the Furious versus Need for Speed. I like Need for Speed that much more. And even looking down the line at some of the Fast and the Furious movies... Most of the Fast and the Furious movies, this movie I, I liked more. I just did. Because of the characters. Because of the story driven. It was character driven. It was story driven. It was well written. The fact that they didn't have CG was a huge thing. Uh, that's my review for Need for Speed. Also check us out on the Daily Fix show uh, dot wordpress dot com. Uh, follow us on Twitter at, at Daily Fix Show. Uh, like, subscribe to our channel. Hit us up in that avenue. Let us know what you think in the comments down below. If you go see it, hit me up. Tell me maybe what's your favorite part. Well, uh, what's your favorite car? Things like that. Uh, love you guys. Deuces.